Good morning. I am Dr. Seema and today we will learn about the extensor and peroneal retinacula of leg. Specific learning objectives of today's class. At the end of the class, students should be able to explain the location, attachments, functions and applied aspects of extensor and peroneal retinacula of leg. And the next objective is they should be able to enumerate the structures passing deep to extensor and peroneal retinacula of leg. Retinacula are modifications of deep fascia. The deep fascia thickens to form strong fibrous bands which are known as retinacula. And their main functions are to retain the tendons in place and to prevent their bow stringing during movements. There are different retinacula present in the leg. They are extensor retinacula, peroneal retinacula and fraxor retinacula. And in this class we will learn about extensor retinacula and peroneal retinacula. Extensor retinacula are of two types, superior extensor retinaculum and inferior extensor retinaculum. These retinacula are present on the front of ankle. The Tendons of the extensor compartment of leg or anterior compartment of leg leaves the leg deep to this retinacula and reaches the dorsum of foot. And the main functions of this retinacula are to keep the tendons in position or approximately to the lower end of the tibia during their contraction and hence it prevents the spring out of the extensor tendons during their contraction. Superior extensor retinaculum is a broad band of deep fascia just above the ankle joint and vertically it is about 3 cm. And the attachments of superior extensor retinaculum. Medially it is attached to the lower part of the anterior border of tibia and laterally it is attached to the lower part of the anterior border of fibula. Inferior extensor retinaculum is a Y-shaped band of deep fascia which is situated in front of the ankle joint and to the proximal part of the dorsum of foot. The stem of the Y lies laterally and the upper and lower bands lie medially. And if you see the attachments, the stem of the Y is attached to the anterior part of the superior surface of calcaneum and the upper band of the Y passes upwards and medially and get attached to the anterior border of medial malleolus. Whereas the lower band of the Y passes downwards and medially and it fuses with the deep fascia of the soul. Structures passing deep to extensor retinacula. From medial to lateral they are Tibialis anterior, extensor hallucis longus, anterior tibial artery, deep peroneal nerve, extensor digitorum longus and peroneus tertius. There is an easy way to remember this by using a mnemonics. It is tall Himalayas are not dry places. T stands for tibialis anterior. H4 extensor hallucis longus, A4 artery that means anterior tibial artery, N4 nerve that is deep peroneal nerve, D4 extensor digitorum longus and P4 peroneus tertius. Structures passing superficial to extensor retinacula. They are superficial peroneal nerve, saphenous nerve and Great saphenous vein. Deep peroneal nerve, as it passes deep to superior and inferior extensor retinaculum, it can get trapped, and this is even called as the anterior tarsal tunnel syndrome. Inferior extensor retinaculum strain can be caused due to a variety of reasons, like excessive load put on the ankle and foot, or from a simple slip and fall injury or it can be even due to a forceful twisting of the ankle. And 
as the inferior extensor retinaculum is more important than the superior extensor retinaculum it can easily make the extensor tendon slip off and its proper action can be hampered peroneal retinacula are deep fascia thickening on the lateral side of the ankle they are also two in number superior peroneal retinaculum and inferior peroneal retinaculum deep to this retinacula the tendons of long muscles of lateral surface of leg will be passing to the dorsum of the foot and to the plantar surface of the foot and these retinacula retain them in position superior peroneal retinacula is situated behind the lateral malleolus and it is anteriorly attached to the back of the lateral malleolus and posteriorly attached to the lateral surface of the calcaneum and two tendons of the lateral compartment of the leg that is peroneus longus and peroneus brevis passes deep to it in a single compartment and they are covered by a common synovial sheath inferior peroneal retinaculum is present antero inferior to the lateral malleolus superiorly it is attached to the anterior part of superior surface of calcaneum and inferiorly it is attached to the lateral surface of calcaneum in between few fibers are attached to the peroneal trochlea and thus the whole compartment will be divided into an upper one and a lower one and through the upper compartment the peroneus brevis tendon will be passing and through the lower compartment the peroneus longus tendon will be passing and each tendon will be separately covered by different synovial sheaths structures passing deep to peroneal retinacula peroneus longus and peroneus brevis tendon passes deep to peroneal retinacula but their position differs in both peroneal retinaculas in superior peroneal retinacula the peroneus longus muscle will be superficial and peroneus brevis tendon will be deep whereas in the inferior peroneal retinacula peroneus longus tendon will be inferior and peroneus brevis tendon will be superior wearing tight shoes especially by the athletes they can compress the peroneal tendons deep to the peroneal retinaculum due to friction and it can lead to peroneal tendinitis and later if it affects the synovial sheath covering it it can even lead to tenosynovitis thank you and have a nice day